Welcome to part 10 of the reading group for the Crash Course on Stars by Jan van Denberg. And we're going to be looking at the Bohemian stars today, the Bohemian fixed stars. So we are, we've already made it to page 22 of his wonderful Crash Course on Stars. And uh, he has this graphic here. Um, I mean, blow it up a little bit. And this has um, the fixed stars along with their esoteric symbols, all of them except Algorab, which is this one uh, at the top that's missing its title. And then Angol here is actually Algol. Pleiades is also often, um, rather than all of the Pleiades, is the single star Alcyone, sometimes pronounced Alcyone. Spica, Gienna, Algarab, Alcade, Regulus, Procyon, Sirius, Aldebaran, Capella, Pleiades or Alcyone, Algol, Deneb, Algedi, Vega, Antares that we looked at uh, last time, and we looked at Aldebaran in, in part eight, Alfeca, Arcturus. So these are the Bohemian fixed stars, and they, uh, there are 15 of them, and they have these interesting um, symbols. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and share the Wikipedia page, which um, also has, it's quite nice, it'll take me just a moment. Uh, uh, there we are. And... Um, For whatever reason, it doesn't want me out here. You know what I'll do is I'll just take a little screenshot. And uh, so these are the Bohemian stars from Wikipedia, and you can see the symbols here as well uh, quite interesting and there are also associations what planetary qualities they have uh, what gemstones uh, plants plants that's associated with that star um, and so on and then if you have any um, any activations uh, or significant you know Ascendant, uh, Descendant, Midheaven, M.M. Coeli, anything like that, or planets, or the moon, or the nodes. Within, uh, some people say, I think it's within three degrees of either side, although some people would go a wider orb, like six, which would really be, I mean, in that case, you get some overlap, right? But I think I would say from 23 to 29 degrees Taurus. Now, these do change because this is the sidereal movement of the stars against the tropical. So that's why this is as of 2020, it was at 26 degrees Taurus. Um, if you go back to 1950, it's around 25 degrees Taurus. If you go around, you know, 1880, it was 24 degrees Taurus. But I would say if anyone has from 23 to 29 degrees Taurus, roughly, look into alcohol, you know, that's, I have my, my ascendant is at 26 degrees Taurus. I know someone with a zero degree Gemini sun. So Alcyone is going to be a, a strong uh, influence for them. Now, as we were seeing in the previous um, sessions, it really does matter if you have the planet there that is the exaltation or detriment of that particular line. And if, if the fixed star happens to be in a line that doesn't have an exaltation or detriment, it's not really uh, as accessible or relevant to the world or to people at that time. So, you know, even though I have my ascendant conjunct algal and that has some significance, it's not the same as if I had a planetary activation or node or moon um, that was the exaltation or detriment of that particular line in the Rei Fi Ching. So what you really want to do is 
say you do have something active conjuncting any of these, look in the Ray V. Ching. Find what gate and line this is. And then see what the exalts and detriments, if any, of that line. And if you have one of the exalts or detriments, then you're really um, kind of, that's about the strongest you can get in terms of the impact of the star on you. So that's kind of an interesting, interesting way of, of analyzing it. And yeah, we see these, um, these Gemini stars, Cancer stars. Of course, these are moving, so it doesn't mean that they're in the constellation of Gemini or Cancer. That's where they are now. Or as of 2020, these are the locations. And uh, it's interesting just, yeah, I think, you know, let me just now share. I have another... Um, some notes that I've taken, which uh, are on Chaldean numerology. And these are just some notes that I, uh, I took, which these are kind of planetary archetypes of the numbers. So zero represents the cosmos, one represents the sun, two represents the moon. You can see I also have the tarot archetype here. And I have, um, the, what are basically the elemental properties of the numbers. But what I really wanted to point out is, you know, you can look up Algol, that's 18. A raid moon with drops of blood falling with a dog catching them. That's the Chaldean tablet. It's Mars with the sun and Saturn here. Um, or let's see, I'll see any. I guess I don't have that one. But the Pleiades, I might, I haven't filled this out, but let's look, okay, Aldebaran should be there. Ah, the Royal Star of Aldebaran, 37, the Royal Star of the Bull. And these are some of the associations. And thank you to numerology-toolbox.com for some of this. I've kind of pieced together my notes from their website and from other sources. Uh, we have Capella, 34. And these are these can be kind of problematic. Um, Sirius, not on there, but see, it. I think it's probably is associated with, with one of these numbers. I just maybe haven't added that note. But you can see that a lot of these numbers from Chaldean numerology are actually associated with the Bohemian stars. Regulus is twenty three, the royal star of the lion. I think we have Alcade, Algarab. Oh, the Star of Algarab, the Star of the Magi, 17. Um, so Spica, the Star of Spica, associated with 72. And, you know, these are some of the associations for that. So it's just interesting. I would urge anyone who's doing a deep study of the fixed stars to look into Chaldean numerology, we see that Arcturus is associated with 82, one of the most powerful numbers. I don't, oh, Star of Alpheca, 66, associated with perfection in the fine arts, Jupiter with Venus and Venus. Antares, the royal star of Antares, divine grace, progress and spiritual life. Oh, echo there. So most of them I have listed. Vega, kicking in doors is kind of its nickname, associated with number 36. Deneb al -Gedi. So we really have almost everything, everything except Sirius and Alcyone, which I think is just due to oversight on my part, because I'm sure that they have numerological associations as well. But in any case, I just wanted to share this. These, this is kind of my... Uh, my notes on Chaldean numerology. And uh, and then I'll just go back to what we've been reading, Jan van Denberg's wonderful work. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to share some of that because if you are interested in the fixed stars, definitely recommend checking out Chaldean numerology. 
In the context of Scorpio, magic, and stars, hereby a short overview of the so-called Bohemian stars. The Bohemian stars are 15 stars which by the ancients were considered as a source or root of astrological power that was magnified whenever one or more of the visible planets were within six degrees. Okay, so that's, that's where the six degrees thing is. So six degrees on either side, I mean, that's, that's quite a wide orb. All those stars are easily visible by the naked eye, and they are all to be found in the Northern Hemisphere. Agrippa. Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa discussed these stars in his De Occulta Philosophia, 1530, as the Behini, describing their magical workings and Kabbalistic symbols. He attributed these to Hermes Trismesticus, as was common with occult traditions in the Middle Ages. During Agrippa's time and into the 17th century, there was a burgeoning interest in astrology, and many astrologers would publish their divinations and other findings as the printing became more readily available, especially in the 17th century. Many were looking for answers to plagues, wars, and other major events like marriages, royal happenings, and so astrologers were in the soup of all the drama in Europe. These stars should have magical capabilities under specific cosmic circumstances, like conjunctions to open portals of energy. We see here an amulet and a popular charm during the plague. The Hebrew word ba rakab davarab, which translates to speak the blessing, inscribed on a piece of parchment. It was worn around one's neck to protect the wearer from disease. We know this magical word as abracadabra. Where are the 15 stars? There's also a relationship between Sirius and the mythic bird Phoenix. The story is that centuries or millennia, for centuries or millennia, the phoenix flies west to build a funeral pyre at the temple of Heliopolis in Egypt and is consumed by the fires. Phoenix, the phoenix is then rebirthed from the fire's ashes where it flies east to repeat the cycle. This points to a relationship between Sirius and the sun in the 1,461 Sothic cycles. Under the best circumstances, potions were made, or magical applications, like talismans. Also, certain kind of ceremonies were planned, like protection rituals. Agrippa relied heavily on the Picatrix, an encyclopedic book of Arabic astrological magic, as the source for many of his astrological talismans. The symbols, as seen in the image on the right, could have some connection to the mythology around the concept of the world tree in the sky, represented by the North Pole Star, currently Polaris, but was represented by other stars over many thousands of years, including Vega, about 13,500 years ago. The solar apex and the solar antipex are the directions the solar system is moving toward and away from. Ah, and you can see here Solar apex, solar antipex. We have Vega and Sirius there. Interesting. Moving toward Vega and away from Sirius. Two of the Bohemian stars loosely mark the solar apex and antipex. Vega marks the general direction of the solar apex, the direction in which the sun is traveling through space. In Sirius, the dog star shows you the general direction of the solar antapex, the direction which the sun is traveling from. It's not quite clear why other bright stars like Fomalhaut, Canopus, Betelgeuse, and Rigel were left out of the group. Perhaps it relates to Ptolemy, who listed the 15 first magnitude stars. Though Sir Wallace Budge suspects a possible Sumerian source, Astrologically, any major star was used only when it was relatively close to a planetary position, including the sun and moon, with a six degrees orb, and appeared to be very significant on the natal ascendant or medium coeli, the midheaven, MC. Hermes Trismesticus, credited with the sharing of these Bohemian stars, lived and or worked in the two cradles of civilization, 
Mesopotamia, and the Egyptian region. Only three stars are more than 10 degrees south of the ecliptic, so the perception of the northern stars primarily features. In that context, it's also interesting to realize that roughly 90% of the world's population lives above the equator. These 15 root stars are said to be a toolbox of grand cosmic forces that were never designed with humanity in mind. The movie trilogy, The Lord of the Rings, is inspired by these ring talismans made by using these kind of powers. Interesting comment here. So perhaps be sure what you want. At the end, all stars and planets have their own magic and can be utilized through symbolic, psychic, spiritual, and otherwise magical purposes in our lives. The near-infinite sky dome is a part of our lives, and it has been since our very distant ancestors, hundreds of thousands of years, looked upon them hundreds of thousands of years ago, and not only wondered what they were, but also from a place of seeking, finding meaning, and seeing something beyond oneself. We have some associations, which I'll get to in a moment, and then we have star symbols here. According to Donald Tyson, these symbols characters occur in a 15th century manuscript called the Book of Enoch in the Bodleian Library at Oxford, and also the early 14th century British Museum manuscript, Harley 1612. The manuscripts are in Latin. In Tyson's research, there's a suspected Spanish origin. Due to all of the cross currents of transmissions from ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia, there is a potential that these Bohemian symbols relate to the Gnostic, Kabbalah, and Jewish esoteric and mystical traditions. Here we see the Tree of Life. And then over here we have some of the associations. Algol, strength, intense passion, connection with the forces of the natural world. Pleiades, or Alcyone, Love, greatness, luminary, desire for inner knowledge, peace, communication with spirit. Aldebaran, high intelligence, honesty, honorable behavior, eloquent communication style, reliability, courage, and success, and so on. And you can see, so these are some of the associations that could even be added or combined with what I was showing earlier in Chaldean numerology. For instance, let me look up Capella again. The star of Capella, uh, debilitated strength gained through business, stress, anxiety, can be lucky in wealth but at a cost, succumbing to sensuous pleasures and an addiction to sex and alcohol. Some of the associations that I found online from websites such as Numerology Toolbox. Well, here we just have highly esteemed public visibility, affluence, determined, and enterprising. So a little bit of a different uh, association there. Or let's see, Procyon. That was one I did not have an association for. How about Regulus? The second of the three command numbers, the royal star of the lion, the royal star of Regulus. So heart-directed, strong leadership, fame, virtuous, reputable, wealth. I mean, that one is pretty spot on. Let's try Algarab. The star of the Magi. And here it's protection, safety, dependent, dependable, and responsible. Or let's see, Spica. Continuous income, mind devoid of doubt and filled with joy. Mars with Neptune and the moon. Uh, protection, abundance, psychic abilities, insights, wisdom, sowing and reaping. So, yeah, some similar associations to be sure. I see these are keywords that come from kaylincastell.com, Bikini and Stars. To realize life is dualistic, so these characteristics have their opposite. Absolutely. All right, well, I think that's it for now. Uh, when we come back for part 11, wow, we've done so many of these now, uh, we'll pick back up with Regulus, but 
yeah, it's been really enjoyable for me um, exploring the stars with you. And if you have any of your own understandings of the fixed stars, or if you have any of them connecting to any of your, um, you know, activations or ascendant or, or midheaven, anything like that, post about it. I'd like to, I'd love to chat about it. And here are your experiences of that. You know, I have Al Gol conjunct my ascendant, and that's been something that I've learned quite a bit about over the years and has kind of given me a mark of Al Gol in some sense that has put a lot of people in my fractal who also have Al Gol placements, whether it's North Node or Moon or Sun or other planets, Venus. Uh, I've had quite a few people who've had those algal connections to me and we're kind of somewhat of a club. Um, and uh, I'm always interested in learning more about the fixed stars. So thank you for watching. When we return with uh, the next part, part 11 now, we will be talking about Regulus. Thank you. <laughs>